my sweet shabby loving friends. Welcome back. If you happen to be new here, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I enjoy sharing all things DIY and decorating. And if you enjoy those things too, then stick around. If you like what you see, then please subscribe, like, and comment. Now today's video, we are going to be doing all things picture frame. So we've got several here that we're going to be making over. Now this first one here, I started off with this picture frame from Goodwill that I probably paid, I don't know, two bucks for. And I made a message center out of this several years ago and I have liked it and I have used it, but it's time for a little update. So we are going to be painting it, changing the fabric and adding some new little embellishments to the edges there. Now for this, you ever have one of those projects that you're just trying to rush and trying to get it finished? Well, welcome to my world. I thought that I could put the chicken wire in here and then paint this frame with the chicken wire already in and I was just making a big old fat mess on this thing. So, I'm going to be removing the chicken wire, continuing to paint this pink. So this is going to get updated, but it's gonna be done correctly. Then, I have this gorgeous faux leather frame that we're going to be shabbying up with a doily. And I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this, but this is one of the last of these picture frames that I picked up from Ikea. And I just love these little things. They're just adorable and so easy to work with. So we're going to go ahead and get these projects started. Stop the presses. We interrupt this episode to bring an immediate news flash. I have hit 1,000 subscribers and I just want to thank you lovely ladies from the bottom of my heart. I knew when I started this channel just a few months ago that I wanted to do a tutorial style crafting because that's how I learn. And I also decided regardless if I had 10 people or 10,000 people here, I was going to have fun and work hard to bring you tutorial style crafting every week. And I cannot thank you enough for being here, for all your kind comments, and for the way that you support and encourage me. Now let's get back to these projects. For our first project, we're going to be painting our faux leather picture frame. Now if you saw last week's video, I painted a little train case that was faux leather. And this paint actually works very well on so many surfaces, and faux leather is also one of them. I'll be using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. Not sure if it's coming up on camera, but that has such a gorgeous embossed floral design at the top that's kind of hard to see with this being so dark. So once we get some paint on there, that is just really going to make that detail pop and it is going to look so pretty. I like to start on the sides. That way you can come back and smooth everything out on the top and it just really looks good. Now that we have those sides painted, we're going to come back and do the top and smooth out. There's usually a little ledge of paint left over from when you paint the sides. And then when you come back over the top and do that last, you can smooth all of that out. And now we're going to set this off to the side and start on our next project. Now I'm going to be deconstructing my little message board here. So this backer is just poster board that I put fabric on. I don't need this fabric anymore. So I'm just gonna take this apart. See, just poster board with the fabric on there. I had burlap and a little sunflower on there and it was adorable, but it's time for that to go. We're gonna make it look a little more shabby chic. Now I'm just going to be sanding off where I've got a little bit of hot glue residue left here. And after I sand that, then I'm gonna start painting and I want this one in the linen white as well. Baby wipes make an excellent way to just clean up any of that sanding dust residue. Just wipes right up. And 
then I do kind of dab to get the paint into those corners and then smooth it down. You want to make sure that you don't attempt to put on more coats until your first coat has dried thoroughly or you're just going to lift up the paint that you have just applied. So we're going to pop it over here, let it dry, and move on to the next project. So my paintbrush doesn't dry out in the meantime, I've just stuck it in a little Ziploc bag. And that way, when I'm ready to put more coats on those other projects that we've just painted, I can go right back to that and that just eliminates having to use so many brushes. I'm going to be removing the chicken wire out of here because I didn't put it in tight enough and I tried to paint it after I had put the wire in there. I just made a mess. So I'm just going to be taking a screwdriver and digging into all of these staples here, taking my needle nose, pulling those staples out, and then painting this properly and reinserting this how I should have the first time. And this is going to be a little bit of a tedious process, so we are definitely not going to be filming all of that. The color I originally had on here is kind of a brighter bubblegum pink, and I'm going to tone that down a little bit with the Waverly Ballet Slipper. This is a much softer, more delicate pink. I think the softer pink is going to make it look more shabby chic. And again, we're going to start on the outside and then come back over and smooth out any strokes on the top. Now we're going to fancy up our cute little Ikea picture frame. The object that I want to put in there is actually going to be burlap. So I'm going to cut it six by eight just to make sure that I have enough and that it's not going to show any of the edges of the burlap when I go and put it in here. So you can see it extends out there. And I'm just going to go and trim this down. Now I'm just going to glue this down to some cardstock. This little insert that came with the picture frame just didn't have enough stability to hold that burlap because it's a thicker fabric. And that's what we have so far. Now we're going to be making some rosettes to put in there and that is just going to be so pretty. Our four year rosette sizes they depend on the size of your strips. So for instance, when I made this little one, this was a half inch wide strip and it was only a foot or maybe 13 inches long. Now to make this nice big fluffy one, this is one and a half inches wide and 44 inches long. Now to begin making this big little fluffy one here, we're gonna take our strip and we're going to fold it in half and we're going to glue that because we just want to get the middle started. So now that I have glued that in half, I'm going to put just a little bit of glue here and I'm going to fold it over. And then I'm going to do another little bit of glue and roll that over again because what we want to do is get the middle of that little flower going. Now what we're going to do is roll and glue. Put just a little touch of glue and roll that over. And you're just going to keep twisting, rolling, and gluing down. It doesn't look like much right now, but as you keep doing that process, it is going to make it look so cute. Twist it, roll it, and Put a little bit of glue. Twist it, roll it, and now we'll put a little bit more glue. And that is all you're going to do. Hey, and so that's all I'm going to show for demonstration purposes right now. I also don't want my video to go too long. So I think that looks cute together, but this key is not showing up well enough, in my opinion, on this burlap background. I'm going to take my white paintbrush that I've been using. So let me just rub some of that on there. Much better. I'm just going to roll it to the back and load that up with some glue. For the key, I'm just going to glue it on the back of this knot here. 
super duper cute. I want to bring out this embossed detail just a little bit here. So I'm going to be dry brushing on some of the Waverly silver lining. So I'm just going to dip my bristles barely into the paint that's left on the lid. And I'm going to get most of that excess off on a paper towel. Just come across those details. I'm going to dry brush the edges as well just to give it more of an aged appearance. I got a little too much paint right in here, so I'm gonna take a baby wipe on my finger and just take some of that off. Dry brushing really makes those details pop. I'm gonna be doing something a little special um, just for me actually as a little um, remembrance piece for my mother. Now, fun fact about myself, I used to play the piano for my church. I wasn't very good at it, but if you know how to play hymns and you're in a church of about 130 people, you are the church pianist. So I'm going to be taking one of my mom's favorite hymns. I'm gonna be putting that in the picture frame, but I'm also going to be putting one of the doilies that she had hand crocheted, and I'm gonna just put that in there and once I get it all together, I just think that's going to be so sweet and so special. The first thing I'm going to do is to remove this page. I have my sharp finger knife here, my finger blade. So I'm going to put cardstock up underneath so I don't cut all the way through the other pages. Now I'm just going to center it up onto the picture frame backer and see how I need to line that up and where I need to trim it. I'm just going to put a dot of glue on each corner. So that's what we have so far. See where I want my doily. So I think I like it like that where this top of the stanza is showing and that is at the bottom with the flower being at the bottom here. I may be able to just wrap this. Oh, that did, that worked. Placing that doily there like that. Because I really didn't want to cut it. I have this cute little jeweled emblem. This is not my mom's jewelry. I could have used some of her jewelry, but chose not to. But this looks like something that she absolutely would have worn. So I am going to be gluing that into the middle here. And that is all I'm gonna do with that. And I'm gonna look at it and go, love you, mama. Sometimes the simplest things are the things that you actually treasure the most. Now we're going to be completing our message board. So I will be cutting out this foam board. It's a foam core board and I purchased this at Walmart and this is going to allow me to be able to use push pins to put my little messages, notes, whatever I want, pictures um, into that little message board. So I will be cutting down the foam board to fit inside of our picture frame then I will be using this beautiful fabric. This is a Waverly fabric, and I picked this up also at Walmart in the fabric section, and this is already cut into one yard. Look how just gorgeous that is. So I'm going to be applying this fabric to this board using the Krylon Easy Tag. So the first thing we have to do is get this foam board cut to size. So this is 12 by 24, but I am actually going to be cutting it a quarter of an inch shorter on each measurement. I'm actually gonna do an eighth of an inch because I can always cut it down if it's too big, but if it's too small, you're gonna get a new board. And I'm gonna take a bigger knife and just work in that So now that I've bent it up, I can take my knife now and go through that material and do a test fit. 
Now that my fabric is all pressed and pretty, I am ready to cut out my piece. I cut my foam board smaller. I did that because I want to cut my fabric a little bigger so I can wrap around and it won't be so tight that I can't get it into the picture frame. The two inch seam all the way around is what I'm going for. So now that I have my fabric piece cut, I will be going out into my garage because you do not want to use this easy tack inside. So I'm going to be spreading out an old Amazon box to lay this on. I will spray this with the easy tack. Then I'm going to lay my fabric on top of that and I will be taking my Bondo spreader and I'll just be spreading the fabric just like this so it will adhere to the foam board. Let me head out to the garage, get this stuff stuck down, and I'll be right back. So we're gonna flip this thing over and use just your regular old stapler. I'm gonna start on this end and one on the opposite end. And I'm just gonna clip the corners so I don't have so much fabric bunched up at the corner. So that is how I trim the edge. And then I'll put this edge down and staple it, and that edge over and staple it, and it's just a nice neat corner. And we're done. How pretty is that? Now we've got to get this thing nailed down into our picture frame. I have my big staple gun here. I'm a little concerned because I didn't have the smaller staples that I thought I had. So I'm going to use a bigger staple. Hopefully I'm not going to mess this up. Let's see what we got here. Nope. That's not going to work. So we're going to do something else. All right, packing tape it is. Instead of a plan B, I just call it a plan Becky. I'll just find some way to figure it out. Yep, that works. So now we've got our fabric in there. Then we're gonna start shabbying up with some cute little accessories on there. We are going to be making a cute little shabby flower to go on here. And then I'll also be using this pretty lavender sprig in there as well to just give it a little bit of oomph. Now I saw this flower technique on a channel. I think it's called A Little Shabby Chic. She's not uploaded anything in a while, but she has some really very beautiful flower tutorials. And so this is one of the ones that I'm going to be showing you today. I looked around to find something that I thought was going to be a good size for a flower up here. And this is a band off of a wide mouth mason jar. That's going to be a good size up here. I'm just going to go ahead and cut out my piece of felt. And for the flower, I want a nice long piece of this fabric. So I'm going to cut about a two inch section right here. So just snip and rip that and get excess string off. I had showed you a similar flower. This is just a different take on it. So this is a two inch strip and it is 40 inches long. So you take your strip and you fold it in half and you're going to glue closely to those edges. Now I am using a different glue gun. This one is a fine detail tip glue gun because the other one just would deposit too much glue for this particular project. And so that's what we're going to do all the way down our strip here. So now that we have our tube formed here, we're going to go back in and we're going to make little snips about a quarter inch apart and we're going to make them almost to that glue line just like this. And we're gonna continue all the way down our tube. And now that we have finished making all of our little snips all down our tube, it's time to start gluing. And you're gonna start on the outside edge here and you're just gonna start gluing that tube onto your piece of felt. Hot glue dries pretty quickly. 
So if you work in small sections, it's easier to do. We've gone around the outside edge here. Now you're going to continue on with gluing that down, but you're going to come down underneath this and you're going to make a second row with your loops. So we're going to do our loops row after row until we get all of this into the middle. After doing all of our rows of gluing that in, that is what we have. And that is what we have on the back. So now what I'm going to do is just hold my hand down, take my fingers and just kind of fluff up. I want to get those fibers nice and shabby looking. Once you rough it up with your fingers, it just makes it look a little more tattered and a little more shabby chic. I'm going to take one of these little rosettes that I made in a previous video and I'm just going to pop that in the middle and glue that in like that. And there we go. Look how pretty that is. So now what I'm going to do is figure out how I want my lavender to look. And I think that that looks good. So what I'm going to do is lay this aside and glue down my florals. And it may take a second when you're gluing your florals down for that glue to set. I just have those sprigs there in the corner just like that. Then I'm going to come over the top and since I've got a very large base to work with here, I've got plenty of space and plenty of room to stick glue and hold that down. I'm just pressing firmly, holding down, giving it time to set. It was cute before, but now that we've painted this up, changed the fabric and added some more little shabby chic embellishments here, it just changes the look of it. It is so cute. So I tried getting this chicken wire stapled in here and my hands are just not strong enough anymore to pull and staple this. So I'm going to let Mr. Shabby staple this in for me when he gets home from work. So what we're going to do now, we're going to make some embellishments for the frame. So I'm going to use some laces and some ribbon and some fabric here and we are going to create another shabby flower. This time I'll be using pink felt and I just picked this up in the crafting section at Walmart. Isn't this pretty? That is so pretty. I'm going to cut some wider pieces of this. And right now, I am just going to start laying some pieces out. This is going to be our nice little base here. And I'll start at the back and just start gluing. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Lay in some of these little chiffon-y looking pieces. And you just basically put in whatever you want and you just lay it in there and if it looks good you cut it and you glue it down. So I layered in some more of this beautiful fabric on top here just to give it such a vintage almost ethereal look. I love that and I have these little jewels I ordered off of Amazon and I I think that one looks really good. I'm just going to go ahead and glue it onto our flower. I love that. And the next time you see everything, it'll be all staged up and ready to go.
Thank you so much for being here today. I truly appreciate it. I hope you found lots of inspiration for ways you can update picture frames in your own home. And if you have the opportunity, call your mom. Until next week, my friends, be blessed.